Tuesday tutorial about the solenoidal symbiosis. Some of the questions we want to address in this video. What is the solenoidal symbiosis? What are its elements and the logical relations that give structure to the diagram of the solenoid? How we can extract the 66 classes of signs of the periodic table of classes of signs from the solenoid of semiosis. What is the relation between the periods of the solenoid and the phases who describe the classes of signs? And finally, what are the relations among the 11 aspects that compose the solenoid of semiosis and the three correlates that give us the panoramic view of each class of sign. Let's start with the title, the solenoid of semiosis. In mathematics, more specifically in chaos theory, the solenoid is a strange attractor that is a phase space which has a form of a torus that wraps around itself but always mapping and returning to its initial point. That's what's going on in our solenoid as well. The solenoid of semiosis evolves in a spiral movement but always mapping onto itself and it does that in four different periods which are described here. So, as a whole, the solenoid of symbiosis is also returning continuously to its initial point. That is, it has no beginning nor end. It's always continuously moving, returning, uh, mapping over itself. Now, this is the solenoid of symbiosis, that is, the action of science. That means that the solenoid of semiosis is in activity, is in movement. Better yet, it is pulsing, it has a dynamics. And the pulse of the solenoid of semiosis is given by the way the three categories, firstness, secondness, and thirdness, enter into each of the 11 aspects of the solenoid. So the solenoid gives us a order of determination among the 11 aspects of the sign. Starting with the immediate object, going to the immediate interpretant, then the sign itself, then dynamic object, then dynamic interpretant, then final interpretant, then relation sign to dynamic object, then relation sign to dynamic interpretant, then relation sign to final interpretant, then relation sign dynamic object and dynamic interpretant, and finally relation sign dynamic object and final interpretant. So what our theory says is that there are only 66 possible configurations in which the three categories enter in one of the uh, one of each of the 11 aspects given by the solenoid of semiosis. And these 66 possible configurations represent exactly the 66 possible classes of signs of our periodic table. So, if we go to the periodic table, we see at each little square representing a class of sign, at the bottom of this little square, a sequence of 11 numbers, and these 11 numbers, they are related to the 11 values that the 11 aspects of each a class of sign has, which determines its position in the periodic table, that is, how it fits in the period and in the phase described by the solenoid of semiosis. The solenoid also allows us for the identification of some fundamental properties of semiosis. The first one is that semiosis is a system. It is actually a net of logical and mathematical relations among the 11 aspects of the sign. 
That means that semiosis does not require concepts as space, time, matter, energy, force, mind, consciousness, intelligence, or anything else. The second property is that semiosis is autopoietic. That means that the system bootstraps itself and it develops uh, containing its own possibilities. It does not need a beginning or an ending, nor a creator, but it develops by itself. The third property in this, the dynamism of symbiosis. So there is a movement that uh, determines the growth of symbiosis from the less towards the more complex. And this is the development of symbiosis. The fourth property is that symbiosis is periodic. There are four periods involved in the growth of symbiosis. And the periods, they are organized in a hierarchy so that presentation involves grounding, representation involves the two antecedents, and communications involve all others. The other property is that symbiosis is teleological. It is growing towards an end, towards a purpose. It may never reach the final end, but it is developing, it is growing towards that purpose, which will be the final sumum bonum. Let's discuss now how the solenoid of symbiosis was built. The first thing to have in mind is that there is a fundamental difference in describing the 66 classes of science using the concept of correlate, the three correlates used by Peirce in his 1903 syllabus, or then adopting his 1905 on idea of aspect or respects in which he tried to find the finer structure of symbiosis. Take as an example the millenar Japanese art of origan. This is an art which teaches us how to fold little pieces of papers into multidimensional shapes. Now, a sign is pretty much like that. You can unfold the structure of the sign into the three correlates, and that will give you a more panoramic view of what are the relations inside. Or then you can adopt a more sophisticated description, unfolding completely the piece of paper to find all the foldings that are on the paper. Now, that's pretty much what we are doing when we are differentiate the correlates and the aspects. In 1903, Peirce identified the three correlates, but he also needed the concept of ground, and he used the three categories with their possible degenerations in his discussions of the ten genuine classes of science. From 1905 on, he dropped the concept of degeneration into the categories. He dropped the idea of a ground, and he abandoned the three correlate description and tried to find the ten aspects that he thought would enable him to describe the finer structure of semiosis without the need of the concepts of degeneration or ground. And that's how he came up with the 10 aspects or respects. He then tried to find out what was the order of determination among the 10 aspects. He started by the sign itself, and he made a lot of tentatives, many experiences, and produced many papers of this kind of work without ever finishing how the uh, determination among the ten, so uh, the ten aspects would be finally. We chose a different route. 
Instead of starting with the sign itself as per T, we begin our analysis with the most complex aspect, which is the relation sign dynamic object and final interpretant. Now, putting this most complex aspect on the top of this figure, we see that naturally we produce a decay of all elements or components which are present inside the most complex uh, aspect. Now, this natural decay that we have called the analytical cascade of the aspects of semiosis happen in three different poles. The first pole is that driven by the force of the object that produces an axis of decay, which we have called the axis of objectivation. The second pole is driven by the force of interpretation, and that produce the second axis, which is blue, and we have called the axis of interpretation. And finally, there is a third pole, which is driven by the force of the sign itself, and we uh, gave it the red color and called it the axis of signification. Now, Doing that, we found out that there is a 11th aspect that was not present in Peirce's analysis, which is the aspect of the relation among sign, dynamic object, and dynamic interpretant. Notice that there are four dashed lines linking the aspects on the axis of interpretation to the aspects on the axis of signification. That is so because the axis of signification is the drifting force of semiosis, but it, it is always in the conditional future, while the axis of interpretation gives us the actual effect of interpretation at every point of semiosis. To build the solenoid, all we have to do is to link the three axes starting at the bottom of the axis of objectivation, that is, at the aspect of the immediate object, and then proceed to the aspect at the bottom of the axis of interpretation, and then doing the same at the bottom of the axis of signification, and repeat that procedure until we get to the top of the most complex aspect. We could have chosen to link the dots using triangles or another shape as cones, but we found out that the solenoid is more faithful to what is actually happening in this process. Although there is a very precise path that orders the 11 aspects and give us the way by which semiosis develops from the less complex towards the more complex. Not every sign and not every semiosis will go all the way up to the summum bonum. That is, not every phenomenon that we experience in our phenomenon will develop into a argument. If we bump a rock, there might be seconds in, in the immediate object and immediate interpretant, and the rest will keep as mere possibilities. Now, this is possible because among the four peers, there are a certain degree of autonomy. And the solenoid of semiosis, this autonomy is represented by this looping, this feedback, which is here represented by this arrow going down. Now we see that uh, the sign and the semiosis may be imprisoned in one or the other uh, periods without necessarily developing into the following. But if it does develop it, necessarily it will do following the order of determination.